The oldest books are only just out to those who have not read them. Samuel Butler. This episode of Port Richmond Books tracks the exploration of an actual bookworm, an evaluation of an unsung 1914 photographer, and a visit by Greg's good friend, Dave Miller. We hope you enjoy the show. the most uh, efficient bookworm I've ever seen. I, the tenacity of uh, this little guy. Yeah, what he did basically was he started uh, on volume one, two volume, set 1841 of the life of John Paul Jones. And if he came from another book, it's hard to say. But he did start in here, the first volume, and he worked his way through two volumes and not having a timeline, we're just not sure how long it did take him or if there was a family involved or he was part of a crew. But they sure did a, a good job on the second volume, especially the last probably 40 or 50 pages. It looked like they, uh, they had a party or a banquet. Maybe they, a couple of them got married. Uh, Dave Miller uh, owned a bookstore at 40th and Chestnut. That's where I first met him. Like all book people that like to drink beer, we became very good friends. Uh, I would spend afternoons there on my way home from work. Uh, I learned a lot from Dave and Al. Dave and I have been friends for over 20 years and uh, collaborate on a lot of buys and, uh, and selling. Love at first sight. No, I don't remember the first time I met Greg. Uh, because we only had a handful of customers, maybe there were two handfuls, so he had just come in to um, talk with us. But he did quickly start coming around the shop regularly, and it is impossible not to love Greg because he was like he was overjoyed to see another bookshop, another place to hang out and find books that he liked and talk about the books. And we had a little kitchen area there, so we did have beer in the refrigerator, and I guess that's sort of a cliche, but um, you know, it kept our customers happy. So Greg started to make deals with us about books he was selling, my partner and I, after we were three sheets to the wind, you know, and he was holding his own and saying, well, you need to buy this book here, it's the greatest book, and you know, it's all his first edition, he's gonna become a big author. But he's not a hustling salesman, and he ended up you know, giving us great deals and just enjoying the camaraderie and talking about books in a basement like this. It looked like this, the, you know, to walk to the laundry tub, you had to, you know, carry the laundry somewhat sideways. Greg had a book deal for us, and it was somebody's cousin, a Mr. Berkowitz, in a house in Logan, and the person had a lot of chess books and chess checkers books, drafts books, which were unusual, and the person was Told, it was said that he had died and he was a loner, but he read a lot. So we were to meet Greg at this house at a certain time, and we got there a bit early. And my business partner and I, we, Alan, we gained access to the house somehow. I don't know, you know, Jimmy the door figured, and it was in a rundown street in Logan where the houses may have been falling into the earth at that place. Like, and we went in the house and it stunk. It was really putrid in there. We went up to the guy's bedroom where the books were and you could see the outline of the body because he had died in bed and uh, I guess the juices, the acids of the body had burnt the bedspread. And we opened a window and started going through and the guy was a saver, collector. He had boxes and boxes and boxes, but mainly with old clothes, old underwear, old shoes, bills, paid and unpaid. But he also had this book collection. And I guess we, I don't know if we saw a bottle there or something, but we were walking around, we put on the guy's hat, and he had a robe there which maybe belonged to his wife or something, and we were wearing the robe and some women's clothes just out of weirdness and going around like saying, what's this, and piling up books. And Greg had been there earlier, and I forget, and he went away and he didn't know we had a miscommunication. But it was a terrible shock to Greg's system when he came in because Greg is very um, respectful. 
you know, and thoughtful, amazingly thoughtful person. And here we were, like, with the music up, dancing around where this person had died there, standing on the bed where his body had lain. And Greg, you know, was, was horrified. It was like the scene at the time there was something going on with Somalian rebels. And there were images in the news of, you know, these rebels being equally rude, you know, butchers, you know, who just like wear anything and wreck into people's houses and take over. Anyway, what we found out from Greg is that before, he didn't go into the house because he felt the spirit there or something. And there was a woman he worked with named Wanda, and he wanted her to come there to pray before removing anything from the house. And instead of being prayerful, we were just totally insane and reckless. So it took Greg, I'm Jewish, my business partner Al is Jewish, the guy who died, Mr. Berkowitz, was Jewish, and we found a little case with his yarmulke, with some prayer books, with a talus, and it was Greg who said we should pray for him. So we put on, actually there were a few, so Greg wore the yarmulke, and he had us show him which prayer to say for the, bed, the dead, rather, the Kaddish. And uh, <laughs> Greg led this, us, the two Jews here <laughs> in the prayer for the dead so that we could honor this person instead of just looking at it in a mercenary way as we did. You know, like, just let's grab these books and see what's in this box, going through all the guy's clothes, looking for any loose change. So he taught us a bit of respect there. Serendipity is one of the words that comes to mind when I think of Port Richmond books. Greg handed me this. It's an old National Geographic from 1914, just a couple months before war exploded over Europe. Normally, the old geographics, the pictures are flat and uninteresting, but look what I found in here. First in the book was an essay with pictures from North Africa, and the photos were amazing. Look at this young Arab with flowers in his hair and his shoulders bare. Or this beautiful little girl in the doorway, so alive and young nearly a hundred years ago. Or this dusky beauty and nomad's daughter, bare-breasted forty years before Playboy. The photos are sensual and strong in composition and life. Look at this shot of the bones of a camel. Look at the composition. The curves of the landscape, the curves of the bones and shadow. Later in the book, I discovered the photos of A.W. Cutler. And what classic masterpieces they are. Long before Eugene Smith developed the photo essay for life, Cutler was doing it for National Geographic. Look at this great shot from the Low Countries of a grandfather, a dog cart, and his granddaughter such a moment of rest, a pause in the movement of life, caught in the blink of a shutter. It's especially poignant when you think that German troops would be marching down that dirt trail in less than a year. I wonder what happened to that man and his beautiful granddaughter. Then there's this shot from the English countryside and a wonderful series of shots from the Sicilian hill towns. They're obviously set up shots, but they're so artfully done they seem magic to me. And these young boys seem to laugh out loud, ready to hop down and run off. They're so full of life. Thanks for traveling with us to Greg's place. We hope you enjoyed meeting Dave, the bookworm, and the photos of A.W. Cutler. Stay tuned for more episodes when we'll meet local Port Richmond historian Fred Cimino and find more magic in Port Richmond books.